Here it is. We have not figured out what kind of government we want. We're in favor of Medicare, Social Security, good schools, wide highway, strong military, and low taxes. You see, you just want it all. You don't want to pay for any of it, you selfish pig. Mm. But wait, there's more. Many people, here it comes. Many, pe many people, including some who claim to be outraged by the deficit, claim to be outraged, not really outraged, still haven't acknowledged the disconnect. Just last weekend, Tea Party's mem Tea Party members helped Denny, uh, Denny, uh, Denny Senator Robert, oh, help, I'm sorry, help deny Senator Bob Bennett, uh, the Utah Republican, his party's nomination for his re-election campaign, in part because he had co-sponsored a health reform plan with Democratic sem Senator. Economists generally think that the plan, you ready? Uh, would have done more to reduce Medicare spending than the bill that passed. Whatever his intentions, the Tea Party effectively punished Mr. Bennett for not being a big enough fan of big government. <laughs> that is so wrong, the New York Times. How do you guys tie your shoes in the morning? Bob Bennett was punished because Utahns knew that no health care plan was preferable to the structure that was being proposed by Bennett. None. None. We don't want any more plans for the government. We want less plans from the government. We also, no doubt, are sick and tired of Bennett voting for things like a uh, TARP or, uh, or, or approving uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg or most recently Cass Sunstein. Bennett prided himself with working with Democrats. You know, um, something that in this day and age of progressivism has some have come to see that as compromising principles. And again, let me give the hot news flash to the New York Times. Bob Bennett and anyone else living under the illusion of a true Democratic Party, um, what are you smoking? The Democrats don't exist anymore. They were eaten by the progressives, the labor unions, the communists, the radicals, the globalists, George Soros, yeah, the progressives are the Democratic Party now. So if you want to vote for a Democrat, you vote for the Republicans. If you want to vote for a socialist or a globalist or a revolutionary, you vote for the Democrats. If you don't want to vote for either, so the New York Times, to place the blame squarely on your shoulders is interesting. Rather than placing it on the politicians in DC who have gotten us into this mess, claiming that we haven't figured out what kind of government we want. Yeah, that shows me that the New York Times still doesn't get it. We decided what kind of government we wanted a long, long time ago. We want the kind of government our founding fathers gave us. And you know, it's interesting, until they started changing the history books and indoctrinating us, you know, through the media, <laughs> all of that progressive nonsense, we were much more clear on that. And yet you still haven't been able to kill that in us. It's amazing. See, what we wanted was a, a democratic republic, one based on limited go government with equal justice for all. New York Times, we are not the problem. Big government and those in bed doing the big government bidding is the problem. More on that coming up. Okay. The New York Times sees financial trouble finally on the horizon. They just haven't been able to pinpoint the real problem until today. They announced on the front page that the real problem is you. You just want big bloated government, but you just won't pay the taxes necessary to provide it. There is another choice. Small government. There are people saying that. You just have to listen to them and talk to them, New York Times. The Obama administration is following the European model. European model, you just keep increasing the size of government, and when it doesn't work out, just transform it. And then the people will either swing towards communism on the European left or fascism on the European right. This is where America was put in 1791. This is real left and right. Anarchy on this end, total government on this, this end. America has moved over the years towards total government. Nothing can happen to you over here. The government is just big enough to protect you from the bad guys on each end.
When it's total government, you might have a sweetheart. Jesus might come and be our president. But when Jesus dies and goes back up into heaven, who replaces him? European left, Stalin and Mao. The European right, Hitler and Mussolini. Okay, Greece has just kept spending and spending and spending and spending. In fact, even in the face of this catastrophe in Greece over the weekend, President Obama called Germany's Angela Merkel to convince her to spend even more money than she planned for the Greek bailout. It was Barack Obama who called her up and said, it's got to be bigger. Think big. Now it's a trillion dollars. He wanted more than a trillion. We showed you last night that the markets are betting against this Greek bailout working. Some of the people that got the money are now betting against Greece being able to pay it back. The default swap market rose after the trillion dollar bailout was announced. Meaning those with money, with their money on the line, even with a trillion dollar bailout infusion, they say it's going to default. They're going to get paid twice. Now, we've seen that terrible unrest is already happening in Greece, okay? Now that instability is spreading over to Germany as Germany digs even deeper into the Greece bailout. As a result, the rising tide of anger and resentment is sweeping across Germany now. The German newspaper, Bild, ran this story today. We are the schmucks of Europe again. Gee, when was the last time the Germans felt like schmucks? Oh, oh, that's right. That's right, I remember now, right before World War II. Why did they feel like schmucks? Could it have anything to do that America forced a treaty on them with France and England after World War I, then demanded, the US president demanded with Woodrow Wilson, along with England and France, that they pay all kinds of reparations that they could never afford. They had to inflate their money. Hmm. Now another president is pressuring them to open up their wallets, pour hundreds of billions of dollars or a trillion or so in total bailout money. You've already been seeing the rise of communists and anarchists in Greece. That was who was on the screen, communists and anarchists. Communists and anarchists. Now, who's going to show up in journey, Germany? My guess. <laughs> Gang, I told you last summer. We're about to make the same mistakes. We're about to see the same mistakes made 80 years ago in Germany made all over again. All over again. I'll show you how it plays out this time next. I've been telling you now for a while that we are seeing the rise of the communists and the anarchists in Greece. But now we're about to see what I told you was coming. We are going to see the rise of the European right in Germany now. That's where it's starting. The question for Europe will once again be, do we have fascists or communists that quell all the problems? The last two times all hell broke loose on planet Earth, America was there. We had the will, we had the power, and we had the financial ability to be able to step between those two factions. But there comes a point, and I believe it's approaching quickly, that we will not be able to do that anymore. We, will, we don't even have the moral authority to do that anymore, let alone the money to do that. So who steps in between Hitler and, and Stalin? Who steps in? One country on planet Earth that can, and it is China. China. The world's put a happy little face on, the, on communist China. You'll never read about the totalitarian oppression in China or the 37 million Chinese who suffer, suffer in abject poverty, and that's their number. Not probably a real number, that's their number. Hey, how about that whole one-child limit thing? As long as they can continue to exploit their population of over a billion people who can sew clothes or put together chia pets for eight cents a day, there is no way to fight them. No way. They, they will control the world. So who steps in if Europe breaks down? Who steps in? China does. China will control the direction of Europe and the rest of the world in the next century. Not the United States of America. Not our principles and freedom and liberty and free markets. No, no, no. Communist China. Well, maybe they'll finally be able to bring social and economic justice to the people of Europe, just as they've done for those 37 million of their own citizens. Back in a second.
mistake the truth for anger or hatred. And when people become uncomfortable and when things go dicey and people become afraid, they start to go back to hatred because sometimes hatred makes people comfortable. That's why this program has been urging you and we have been working hard on doing faith, hope and charity. Put positive into your life. So when people do freak out, they don't go to the extremes. They know what the truth is and they know how to fix it. We can fix it together. Tonight from New York.